Hello. So today we're going to talk about how you handle it when you end up with lumps of dried watercolor in random places for whatever reason. In my case it's because when I do things at the gallery I have a lot of kids in there and it's easier just to let them squeeze out and do what they're going to do. But then I don't want to lose all of this watercolor because that's perfectly fine watercolor. I just have to get it back into a usable situation for me going forward. So we're having piles of watercolor. We have a color chart that I did up previously. We have the base tubes of the watercolor over here and then we have a palette. So I will go through this step by step so you can see what the solution is to get yourself organized. So this is a Mr. Pen Airkite water palette and you can see it's about 11 inches long by about 5 inches wide. So give or take. And it's made of plastic. It's got a easy seal in here and it's got an inset lid for extra mixing and it's got 18 wells and then two central areas where you can mix things. So this is great for, I happen to have an 18 watercolor set and a reason you want to do a palette like this that you can close is here's what the teens in my art gallery do is they just squish the paint they're going to use out into random things and this paint is still perfectly good when it dries you just mix it up again with water and it's wet again so it's a shame to lose all of that what you want to do instead is put the paint into something like this when you're done painting for the day then you just close it up and then you know a couple days later you open it up it never goes bad so uh, watercolors that is so what i do is when i have a set of watercolors i label them to keep track of where they are and then I'll put them in here in order and that way if one of them goes empty I know exactly which one's going to go back because when paint is dry the color of the dry paint in this state is often a bit different than the color it would be when it's painted on a piece of paper here's a color chart I made for them and it's often different than the exact color of the paint thing so don't necessarily go based on what this looks like or what the color chart looks like it's best to put them in in a certain order and that way you always know if this one is empty you just count across and figure out which one is going to replace that. And this way you work on things as you do. If you're always using the green then you just replace the green. If you actually run out of the green tube then you just you know, buy another green tube and fill that back in and your palette is always completely set with what you need. So I'm going to fast forward now as I fill it but I just want to show you how this works. So we're just going to go right down the row and right around the thing to show you how you put the paints into the palette. Alright, so now we've got all the colors in the order that I've chosen in these spots. And you might ask, why did I only put a little into each one? Well, normally you're mixing this with water, so a little bit goes quite a long way. And you're going to be mixing, like say you're mixing the blue and the yellow to make a certain kind of green. You want to just take a little bit of blue and a little bit of yellow to mix it up here. If you're making a whole sky, you can squish more blue out for that particular purpose. But let's say that you squished the entire thing full of white and just completely filled this with white and then somehow you accidentally got some red on your brush and got some red into that white while you were dipping your brush in there. Now you've tainted that entire white thing. It's not going to be white again because it's got red. And you're going to have to rinse that whole thing out and put more white in there anyway. So it's good to have just a small amount that you're going to be working with. And that way if you accidentally you'll get some red in the blue and now you've lost that blue color and it's turned into purple, then you can rinse out whatever's left or maybe stick it over here in the corner to save that as a purple for some sort of a purpose and then put fresh blue in there so you have the nice clean blue for other purposes. And I'll note, when I do mixes, let's say I find some blue-yellow combination that makes a really beautiful green that's just right for something, and I mix it up over here, I'll just leave that pile of green there 
and I'll use what I need for the current project and then maybe the next day I come back and I'm working on something else and that green will be perfect. So I would not necessarily rinse out all of the mixing area after you're done with it because you never know which of the colors are going to be useful. And that's again why I have something like this on my other palette. All of these little colors are things that I had mixed up at some point and they end up being a color that I like and now even though there's only a bit left that might be perfect for adding a stem into something or a branch into something or that sort of thing. So in general this palette is great. It has perfectly sized wells so that you can grab out the piece that you want to do your mixing with and then paint with it. It has a top lid that closes very securely but very easily. It's not a struggle to get open or closed has this extra little well that you can put water into or that you can use for extra mixing or whatever you want to do. So well recommended. It's uh, perfect for keeping it. It's not even necessarily for traveling, although it's good for traveling. It's just good for having around the house so that when you're working with watercolors, the watercolors stay in the order that they are. And when they dry, they don't get dust in them or grit in them, or all those other kinds of things and are useful for the next time you want to paint. Okay, so here we are with the paints nearly dry, and now we are going to take care of these little random paints that the teens ended up putting onto random spots. And now my cat's going to come help see what we're doing, because that's what cats end up doing. Right, so in some of these cases, the paint color is pretty obvious which one goes to which and again these aren't even completely dry but you can still see what it's heading towards so you can tell that this one here which is the fully dry one it's just a solid lump goes in with this one and so now that will all be together and again with watercolors it doesn't matter if it's dry or wet you just re-wet it and it's all set so that one was pretty straightforward that one here is pretty clearly this lemon yellow. So I'm going to pry up this lemon yellow and put it over into lemon. And it's got a little bit of green on the bottom of it, probably from whatever was there before. So I'll just scrape that off with my thumb so that we keep a nice pure yellow. With the darker colors, it might not matter much. You know, if you have a super dark violet, if it gets a little tiny bit of something in there, you're probably never even going to notice it. But with yellow, <laughs> You'll probably notice if there's a bright green in there when you're trying to paint something that's delicate and yellow. So it's a good idea to at least get rid of this little bit of extra green that got in there from whatever they were up to. All right. So that should be fine now for the yellow. This one over here looks like that one but you know you could say maybe it's that one so what do you do if you're not quite sure I've got a spare piece of watercolor paper here I've got a brush so all we do is take some water we take a little bit of the known color and we paint it and see what color that ends up being <coughs> if we're not quite sure then we could take a little bit of the other color that we're going to compare it with all right so that clearly is a completely different color see you can there's some colors that you can't really tell when it's in solid form but once you put it into the piece of paper it's very clear so then we'll take a little bit of this one and put it down and that pretty clearly is the first one it's not that second one it's not the darker brown So that means I'm going to pry this up and stick that in this first one. And then we've got this other brown. So just to show how this works, I'm going to get a little bit of water. Get a little bit of that one. All right. And that's clearly not that first one. That's uh, the second one over here. So again, even when colors look pretty similar in their dry form, just paint a little of each and you'll be able to tell which is which. And that way you can put it where it belongs. All right, so I think that's one's a purple. There's only one purple in this set, but here we'll just stick a little to make sure that's actually purple. Oh, now see, so I was wrong. It was more of a blue shows how 
the way something looks when it's dry can be a little misleading. Yes, yeah, so if I had to guess, I would say it's this blue right here. That's a lot more saturated. Now we're going to have to wet this up a bit to get more color just to make sure. Yeah, so that's the same color. Yeah, so those two are the same color. So we'll put them over in there. And again, there's a little bit of yellow in one of these. So I'm just scraping it off with my thumb, my thumbnail. Apparently I should have had a paper towel at the ready for this. All right, so we got, well, let's do the reds first. So we got two different reds here. This red and that red. We'll make a guess and say that red there looks pretty much like this red here. But see how that's pretty different looking? All right, we'll get some of this up. Yep, so that's the same red there. So we'll put those in together. Oops, ah, dropped it in the wrong one. All right, just rinse it off a little. <laughs> get the other color off of it. I did it again! Jeez, Louise. Alright, put it in the right spot. <laughs> Alright, that red there. Looks like that one to me. Yep, so those are the same two reds. So I'm gonna put that over there. They're pretty easy to move when they're dry because they just turn into little lumps of paste. All right, got over there. All right, so we're just down to this green. Now there are three greens My guess is it's the middle one. Well, let's do both of them just to be sure. All right, so my thought is that it could be this one. It's a fairly bright color. Or it could be that one. That's a much uh, more subdued color. Let's find out which it is. Ah, so it's definitely the first one. That one right there. Peel that off. Put it in there. So there we go. So all the uh, little random blobs of color that the teens ended up using in the gallery are now in their proper locations and can be used going forward. So again, with a kit like this, and here I'll clean up this little drizzle here. With a kit like this, it doesn't matter if these colors dry out. It has nothing at all to do with things drying out or not drying out. It's mostly just keeping the dust off of it. Because even if these completely dry and harden, like those little bits that we got there, you just add some water to them and they are back again to liquid form and are perfectly usable. So now we just seal this up to keep the dust off of it. And then next time we want to paint, those colors are in there. Perfectly good for painting. So let me know if you have any questions at all about how to handle used paints that you want to keep working with going forward.